and go. Hello, everybody. What's going on? And welcome back to the hardworking happy hour. I'm Sean. And I'm Catherine. And as always, we will be breaking down all things trades, entrepreneurship, and turning your creativity into a passion, passion career. career. Jenks. Yep. <laughs> Got a uh, drink or whatever. Uh, <laughs> was my intro a little bit more high energy there? Yeah, I did. I like that one. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the vibe check and making me redo it. Appreciate that. Sometimes you got to redo an intro. Hey, hey, sometimes you do. And, and we need this to be high energy because, uh, you know, on its face, it, it might seem like a very lackluster topic that we're going to be covering today. It might seem kind of boring. A little bit dry. A little dry. We're going to be talking about benefits. Yeah. Benefits that you should offer your employees, not only because uh, everybody likes benefits, Benefits are only good things, hence the name. Yeah. But also, it's going to help turn people from... It's going to help turn people from (laughs) looking at this as just a job to an actual career. Like, you have to give people an incentive to stick around. Yeah. And I think benefits is a good way to do that. What do you think? I agree. And I just want to start off with some sort of disclaimer, like we are not financial analysts or financial advisors or uh, this is all just for fun and take it as you will. You always feel like the need to do these disclaimers. Is that a real thing? Can we really get in trouble for that? Okay. We are not professionals. (laughs) This is an audio podcast. Oh, yeah. I can see you wink. I winked. Uh, We're somewhat professionals. We're professionals in other areas, but we're we're just talking about our own experience here with uh, our journey into offering benefits and what it takes to offer things like a 401k plan and health insurance. That's important. You know, it's very important. It's very important. And Catherine, do you know what everyone's going to say when they hear that? What are they going to say? I can't afford it. Yeah, I'm not made of money. <laughs> it's too I expensive. Can't. I love my employees, but I have to pay them as little as possible because I can't afford it. I just can't do it. Well, we're going to give you a couple tips on how you can charge more so that you can afford it. And although it seems very expensive, when it's factored into your complete overhead, it's manageable. Yeah. It's All right, we're, already, it's we're starting to get dry already. So oh, no, we are? Let's, okay. let's crack a beer and see if that... I've been dying for a beer. <laughs> I've been dying for a beer so bad. Uh, and what do we have here? Stella a toi. Uh, oh, no. Did yeah, we run did into the just, same? <laughs> I just realized this is definitely going to require a bottle opener. You think these aren't twist off? These are... No, I never drink these. This is insanely fancy, high class... Are they? A Stella a toi. I yeah. never drink this. It has a French name and it's from Belgium. So, it's, and it's over 600 years of Belgian brewing experience. All right. We wow. have all of these tools behind us. Which one do you think will be the best to open a beer bottle? Pliers. Okay. You okay. keep talking. I'll grab the pliers. Okay. I'm going to keep talking. And <laughs> this is really a, a very high level of production that we have here. I don't know if I approve of how you're trying to attempt that with the pliers. That seems dangerous, but whatever. You said pliers. I did say pliers. That's my fault. So I was. I heard a. I heard a little. No, that was my chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, to touch on the four hundred one k thing, the reason that this is so top of mind is because we just set that up. We've been doing health insurance for our employees for about two years now, I believe. And <laughs> whoa, nice. Got it. It actually worked. Sweet. And. Now we're starting to offer a 401k plan with employer match, which uh, I believe is mandatory that you have to do an employer match if you offer it through the company. So it's something that my accountant uh, recommended that I do for my own tax purposes so I can set one up to contribute myself. But as an employer, you have to have uh, it set up for all of your employees. So that's what I did. What what, what did you... What is it? The expiration date on this beer is March of 2022. That's what's up. So hopefully it okay? got a little stronger. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God. No, I think it's fine. I don't know. I've never, I don't know if I've had, well, I probably had one of these. Yeah. But. It's very fancy. It has a bugle, a bugle horn on the, on the label. It seems fancy. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well. Hey, we'll whatever. see how it goes. We, if we have food poisoning or whatever, or botulism later. Yeah, then uh, this might not get out. 
Because we won't be able to edit it down and upload it to the internet. <laughs> Apparently, this company was started in 1366. How is that possible? That has to be made up. Yeah, that can't be real. That cannot be real. They have records that go back that far to prove that. That that just seems ridiculous. We're going to need some clarification and some proof on that. Yeah. All right. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, before we'll, we... We'll go back to that. Yeah, before we... We'll, we'll definitely get to the bottom <laughs> of it for sure. As we typically do, as we are investigational journalists here on this podcast. Uh, Catherine, how was your week? How was your week? How's everything going? <laughs> uh, my week wasn't great, but it rained. It did rain a Mon- lot. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. It's amazing that with the hurricane that's like in Florida, it affected like the entire East Coast. Yeah. And like it rained for like literally five days straight. Yeah. It was... Not great. <clears throat> and obviously, our flooding is like nothing compared to what Florida is dealing with. So thoughts and prayers or whatever out to Florida. But the Jersey yeah. Shore was like, the whole thing was flooded. Have you seen it pictures? Was? Yeah, no, it was I like, didn't. it was pretty, pretty bad. So it yeah. really affected a lot of people. It's crazy. These dang hurricanes. It is. It's pretty crazy. And uh, it put us off the job site for like two days. So uh, we were dealing with some office type of stuff for Monday and Tuesday. And... Mm-hmm. uh you know, it, it it once again feels like this job that we're on, we're really turning a corner on it, and everything has gone so smooth. Yeah. Everything has it gone so, gone so smooth. Nice. It's really pretty amazing that, uh, you know, you can have one job that goes totally squirrely and just seems like it'll go on forever, and then you get back to, like, some sense of normalcy, and it just feels like it's going so, so fast, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be laying pavers tomorrow, and beyond that, there's, like, just little things to do. Yeah. So I, I couldn't believe it when you said that today. I was like, oh my gosh, we're like about to be on to the next job. That's yeah, such a And I guess new we should we should say that this is actually, we're recording this on Thursday this week. Typically we oh, do it right, on right, Friday, right. but we wanted to, uh, we lost some time with the rain this week. So we wanted to like switch our schedule around so that we could be on site all day Friday and we can yes. knock out these pavers because we're excited about it. We're excited to see some progress. Yeah. And uh, we also need some content for the vlog. So uh, we figured we would switch things around tomorrow. We're going to be set up to just run with pavers. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be really cool. I love paver day. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's fun. It is fun. And we have such a cool design on this one. Yeah. Such a cool design. It's going to be a really good one. So, uh, all right. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this whole benefits scenario. Okay. Tell me about it. 401k. What do you got? Uh, I think, well... Just overarching, Mm -hmm. offering any kind of benefits is so, it really just sets people apart from not only will you get the employee that you want because you're offering the benefits because they want the benefits, but it also shows that their employer is invested in their employee. So you've, you're going to get taken care of in other ways if you have a person that puts enough thought and care into providing you benefits. That's true. Like, uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Type yeah. Of scenario. Yeah, and if they've gone that yeah. extra step to like put these things in place, then they really care about you and they want you to do well because you do good things for them. They're going to do good things for you. If it's a symbiotic relationship, it's great. That's true. Great use of that word, symbiotic. Thank you. Yeah. I like that word. Yeah. Yeah, it's very nice. So, so Jinx. <laughs> did you have anything else to that you wanted to lead in with? No. Not just not until we get to the nitty gritty stuff. That's just so we get to the overall. Real I think it's really just important if yeah. you if if you can, and we'll talk about the money part later. But yeah, if you are able to offer benefits, you should. And if you feel like you're not, you should try harder. I agree. I agree, <laughs> and that's why we are going to get into some of the ways that you can charge a little bit more yeah. for your services. And um, a lot of times, people get stuck in this trap where. They don't feel like they can afford it because they can't afford it based on what they charge right now. Yeah. But that in itself isn't really sustainable because you're going to have so much turnover with employees and you're you're going to be one of those owners that is like complaining all the time. Like nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody yeah. wants to do this. What it really is, is they have more options now. There's a huge demand for skilled labor. So yep. they're going to go to the best opportunity. So you need to realize that, that it's not it's not that nobody wants to work. It's nobody wants to work and not get compensated fairly. So 
it should be important for everybody. It needs to be on people's mind. And yeah. uh, I guess let's start with the the health insurance because okay. we've been offering that for about two years now. And I think this is something that a lot of business owners struggle with because I think they want to offer it. And a lot of times, if you are a business owner and your spouse doesn't get benefits through their work for the whole family, it falls on you to get your own plan. So that's initially how this started. Uh, My wife, Sarah, used to get benefits from a university that she worked at, and I was under that. Once she left that job and went into uh, private practice, she didn't have health insurance anymore. So we decided I'll have to get it through Premier Outdoor Living. And it was something I always wanted to offer our employees, but now it was there was really an emphasis on it because we needed insurance. And really the only way that we could get it was by doing it as an employer. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh that's kind of how that whole thing started. And basically we just reached out to, I, I had no idea how the process even worked. Uh, it was really overwhelming to me to like get started on just the entire process of app applying for a, a group benefits package. And just reached out to our insurance agent and he linked us up with somebody through his firm that handles health insurance. And they basically just shopped around and gave us a bunch of different options. And then you can kind of pick what level of insurance benefit you want to provide. So you could have a really good plan that has low co-pays and low deductibles. So it, it offers a lot of coverage or you can go the other route where it's more of a catastrophic plan. Like, you know, people aren't really going to go to the doctor all the time because the copay is high, the deductible is high. But if you were to get into a car accident or, you know, suddenly get cancer, you're going to be like shielded from those huge, huge costs. And Mm -hmm. that's going to be a much lower upfront investment as a company. So it can be kind of like a a baby step towards that. Yeah. You can get one of those catastrophic plans. Um, how, how are the, uh, I haven't I haven't been to the doctor in a while. Um, how are the copays on our plan? Is it all right? Yeah, it's fine. It's great. It's great. It's um, it was a little convoluted because with health insurance, there's always like primary and secondary, or I don't, maybe that's not the word. I can't remember. There's tiers. There's tiers. So like you have to go yeah. in in network and out of network. That's yeah. What it um. So all of my doctors were out of network. So I had to like switch or deal with it i've just been like dealing with it but even then the copays aren't that bad so that's good it's all there and recently i got this like test done and they were like oh it's gonna be really expensive and then i got the bill and it was like 20 dollars. and i was like well i'm not sure why this is working out this way but i'm just gonna let it go and yeah (laughs) it's a good way to go about it yeah it can be convoluted and uh very confusing but when you have like an advisor like like the insurance people the whole They'll talk you through it. Yeah. And it was actually a lot simpler than I thought when I went into the whole process. Like they just, it's just like buying car insurance or anything else. They, you know, get all of your information. They get the ages and, you know, all of the parameters of whoever your employees are. And then they shop it around. They shop rates and they Mm -hmm. present you with a couple different options. And based on that, it's, it's really just like a monthly payment based on your age and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it really isn't too bad. It's it averages out to about six hundred dollars per person per month, mm-hmm. which seems like a lot. It definitely, and I don't want to minimize it and say that's not a lot of money because it is, especially for people that are just getting started and don't like really have a lot of momentum in their business yet. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be cheaper if you have less employees, and yeah. you have to look at it as an initial like startup investment cost like you're not going to immediately offer benefits and have all of those like you know good things come along with it like you're not instantly gonna find a great employee you're instantly take somebody that was like looking to leave and then retain them forever like that might happen but it's more of an investment up front that you need to factor into your overhead so that going forward when you advertise that you're looking to hire somebody you can say we offer health insurance. We have all of these things in place that are going to be an incentive for somebody to work for you. And then, you know, it goes the other way that 
it's going to incentivize people to stay because they're not forced to look elsewhere just for something like health insurance. Cause that's, that's probably the biggest thing that people need from an employer and is going to be a huge like benefit attracting uh, employees and also keeping employees. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a lot harder to, if an employee, if you're looking at somebody and you really want them to come work for you and they already have health insurance, it's going to be like a real hard, hard sell to be like, come to this job now where you don't have health insurance. That's yeah. like a, that's a real linchpin. But one thing I did want to say about health insurance, yeah. um, <clears throat> a company that I worked for for a little bit, they had a plan where it was like catastrophic was, which is the cheaper version. Yeah. And then they'd give you an HSA, which is a health savings account. And they just put a thousand dollars in. You basically, it was like a debit card that you had a thousand dollars on. And then you could use that towards medical, whatever, co-pays or, um, I even used it for like, uh, my glasses or contacts and stuff. So yeah. that's like another more economical way. If you want to like offer something at first, if you want to just kind of get your toes wet into the health insurance, you can kind of start yeah. with something like that too. Yeah, definitely. I think anything that you can provide is going to be a good start and then you can build on it. You know, if you can't afford initially like a really good plan, you can start with a lower tiered plan, mm -hmm. give people something and then it gives you something to kind of work towards. And especially as your company grows, you're going to need to attract the best talent. And that is going to come from not only salary and that compensation, but the benefits that they get. Like you said, you're not going to get anybody to leave a job with benefits and then come work for you. Even yeah. if you pay them more, it's just not like, I think people really put an emphasis and an importance on getting health insurance through their employer because yeah. they don't have to worry about, you know, shopping around for an individual plan for doing all these things when it's just set up through the employer. It gets just automatically figured out. Like nobody's going to leave a job with health insurance and go to one that doesn't have it. So that is going to be a huge, huge stumbling block when you're looking for those high level key employees. Yeah, definitely. Uh, All right. Do you think we've, we've really uh, convinced people of the importance of health insurance? I think so. Yeah. You think so? I think we drove it home. I think we did drive Very it Very important. Um, <laughs> what else you got on? What else you got on just the benefits of health insurance? Um, less likely to die, less likely to die. If you're offered preventative care, uh, if something yep. bad happens, you're just going to go bankrupt. Like, yeah, that sure. nowadays things are just so expensive. I, I got my appendix out and it was like, you got your appendix out. I did. It was many years ago, oh, yeah, but it was like, the bill was like $34,000. And I was like, a, I had no money back then. And I was like, luckily I had health insurance, but I was like, if I, if I tried to pay for this, yeah, what do you do? And that's, that's just an appendix. Yeah. There are lots of more, much more crazy expensive things that can happen. Yeah. So when something like that happens, um, <clears throat> I think the standard procedure, you do a fake name. Oh, fake name. You do a fake name. And then oh, I didn't under the cover that. of darkness, you sneak out of the hospital. Mm. You know, like when you're almost better, but still like a little bit. Good enough to walk. Good enough to walk. Yeah. You want to, you want to hustle out of there before they're trying to push you out. So, you know, I hadn't considered that. That is something to consider. It's something to think about. Something to think about for sure. So, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, uh, that's another option. If you can't can't afford <laughs> health insurance, make sure that your employees know to um, give that fake name. Yeah, 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 fake name for sure. But yeah, it does. Do we need a just... disclaimer that that was a joke? Because <laughs> I guess that's like some sort of fraud. That was a joke. We've we've been doing Do some jokes. <laughs> we've been doing some jokes on Instagram. And people are like so serious. So that's what made me think of that. Like that oh, was yeah. a joke, everybody. <laughs> Don't commit medical fraud. All right. Just get health insurance like a normal person. <laughs> the thing that's bringing this up is we made a post. The, the tape uh, measure. The tape measure. <laughs> and like there was, it was the end of the day. I needed to measure something for like one second. And I just bought two new tape measures and one of them was still <laughs> in the packaging. So I just like grabbed it and measured something and Catherine had the camera out. So I was like, okay. Uh, and I just went into this thing and it was like the dumbest joke. I was like, all right, you know, here's a good tip to save some money. Leave it in the packaging. Cause they go bad after a couple months and then you can return it and be like, look, it's still in the package. Obviously, you know, I just got it. And people like lost their minds yeah. thinking I was serious. Like, People were saying they should, our customers should, should sue you. Yeah. And like, 
And they were like, isn't that funny? Don't you think it's just a joke? It's funny. I'm like, whoa, geez, people, chill out. It was. I I thought at best people were going to say that was like, it was just dumb. But then like, I didn't it look at so it for a little dumb. bit. And then I looked at the comments and I was like, oh, gosh. Yeah. People don't get it. They don't get it right at all. over their head. Okay. Yeah. Like right. I'm actually going to use a tape measure <laughs> still in the humongous plastic packaging for a month and then return it. Like, come on, uh, people. But... It was a little funny, but also a little alarming. People got so <laughs> mad about it. And I was like, what is going on? So that's what made me make sure I gave you that disclaimer. Yeah. That was a joke. Don't <laughs> do medical fraud or fraud of any type. No fraud. Just no be fraud zone. regular people doing regular stuff. And I guess I should put out there is don't make jokes anymore. <laughs> don't do jokes. Jokes are joke free zone. You can't. I think jokes have been canceled. Jokes might have been canceled. Yeah. <sighs> well, oh, well, too sensitive. Too topical. Yeah, too um, sensitive. But anyway, so <laughs> yeah, if you don't have health insurance, you're going to go bankrupt. And I feel like that's not like, that sounds like a scare tactic, but like, it's kind of just true. Like if it something is. really bad happens, like you just. It's impossible. Like if you get into a car accident and you have, well, that could be covered by your car insurance or like the other person's car insurance. If, all right, just say that you get, you get sick or something, your appendix bursts and you have to be in the, well, if it bursts, you die, right? No. No? No. Well, I mean, if you just ignore it, then yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you get sepsis and die, but mine burst and I am still here, so. It burst? Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought it was like it starts hurting really bad before it bursts and you got to get it out before it bursts because then it's just like fills up your whole body with like, you know, goo. Yeah. Appendix goo. I don't uh, know. The, do you want the timeline? This yeah. is not the time for it. I, we're talking about health insurance, I guess. Yeah, it's 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 topical, and I want to hear. I, I am fascinated about the appendix getting taken <laughs> out. Like, how is there just a part of your body that they're just like? They're like, no, you don't really need that. Was a little bit redundant. Uh, there's actually no purpose for this. Like, how does that happen? Yeah, I that get. I don't know. Okay, bad well, design. Ahead. I guess it had a purpose at one time. I'm not sure, but anyway, I. It was like I'll give a quick version. It was like 8 p.m. after I ate dinner, and I was like, oh, my tummy hurts. That doesn't feel good. Went to bed. Couldn't really sleep because it hurt so bad. Woke up in the morning. Um, I called. We had like a nurse line through my health insurance, and uh, I called the nurse, and she was like, um, because I'm a woman, they assume that it's like other things before they assume it's a, an appendix. Okay. So they were like, okay, you're probably fine. Just wait it out. And if, if it's not good in a couple hours, go to urgent care. I waited. I went to urgent care. Urgent care. I was in urgent care for hours, and they were like doing all sorts of stuff, po poking all over, and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, then they were like, after out, like literally hours, they were like, "This might be your appendix. You should probably go to the emergency room." I drove myself to the emergency room. On the way, it burst. I felt like awful, like barfy. <sighs> it was horrible. Oh, <laughs> you're by yourself in the car. At I this was point? by myself in the car. Yeah, and. uh, I got like real like faint and stuff. And then, then at like midnight, like the next night is when it like got out, but it was, they did it laparoscopically. So it's just like, I've like one tiny little scar left. Huh? Wow. Modern medicine is amazing though. Cause it was like, how big is an appendix and what's it um, filled with? What's in there? I, I'm just I imagining it's some sort of like goo or something like, I don't know, some sort of like, I'm, it goes I'm, bad. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Something gets in there and, and it doesn't like it and it, it says, gets oh, no. infected, I guess. I'm not yeah. sure. But I don't think huh. it's very tiny. I think it's like maybe the size of like your pinky what? knuckle or something. I was thinking it was like at least the size of like your hand. No. You have very little organs that are that big. Really? Yeah. Like your liver is like a big organ. That's like the size of your hand. But not your appendix. The size of your pinky? I All think right. it's. I can see how you could pinky. survive. Like this big, like that you're, big? like your from your knuckle to then your. I think, but I might be wrong. Wow, I'm not sure. I don't That's, have it anymore, so I don't have to. I don't have to know. Yeah, you can't pull it out and, I can't, and, we can't I and look can't at verify it. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll anyway, look into that. Enough appendix talk. I guess. Yeah. But it's important to have, have health insurance because. <laughs> yeah, you would have been completely screwed. Yeah, I didn't uh, pay much for that. Yeah. All right. So I think we have. Uh, We've demonstrated the pluses of having health insurance and offering it to your employees, being able to uh, attract and retain great employees. Give them health insurance. It's a it's an important part of the process of owning a business and growing a business. Yeah. So if you're happy where you're at with just a couple low level employees that aren't really looking for, uh, you know, a, a sustainable career and, and you're willing to go through that turnover 
that's fine. Continue how you're you're continuing. And but if not, if you want to grow and you want to, I think growth almost entirely comes from the level of employee that you have. Yeah. Like that's what's driving your business at this point. I'm just probably holding the business back. But good thing I have good employees because that's what's driving the business forward. And it's an important investment. It's your most important investment. Yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. So was there ever a point in your life where you didn't have health insurance? Uh, like when you were like yeah. young and yeah, young definitely. and starting off, you didn't. Yeah. Because my my parents like drove it into my brain like like if you don't have health insurance, you will die. And I've never not had health insurance. And I've been like terrified to like even go out on my own ever because that was like the thing in my brain like that I was stuck on. But did you not feel that way? Because I feel like a lot of people are fine with not having health insurance. So I wonder if that's like a... Yeah, when you're young and invincible, who cares, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, there was like definitely thing, a while that I didn't have health insurance. And, uh, you know, but my parents always told me if you get really sick... Make sure you don't give a fake name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They didn't say that. Again, that was a joke. Don't do fraud. And I'm, that probably wouldn't work anyway. But maybe we're worth a try. No, I'm just kidding. Again, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But no, for definitely a couple of years, like I didn't have health insurance and didn't think twice about it. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know. I was just like, all right, well, if I get really sick, I'll die. And if I don't, then I'm fine. And I was okay with that proposition for myself at the time. Yeah. But okay. uh as you get older and you know, you start getting like weird ailments like <laughs> ah my knee hurts for some reason or my back hurts. You're like maybe I should have health insurance so I can actually visit a doctor. Yeah. So, yeah, but no that never I I never thought of it that way, but that could be a huge stumbling block for people like yeah. looking to start their own business if they come from a career or a job where they have all these benefits like they're going to be starting from the ground up and that that can be scary. Yeah. So huh, definitely didn't think of that. But I think we've covered health insurance enough. Next thing that we're going to talk about is 401k. Oh, exciting. Yeah. But before we get into that, Catherine just looked up some details <laughs> on the appendix because it was weighing on my mind. What's the what I go ahead. Just just <laughs> it's eight to, give it to the me average is eight to ten centimeters. That's so small. Yeah, tiny, tiny. And that that will kill you if it bursts. And that well, how can something so small cause so much pain? It was yeah, it was pretty painful. But That's it's crazy. Yeah, it it's like infected or whatever. So then it goes into your blood and you get like sepsis. Like you die of sepsis, not like. Yeah, but it's so small. Your blood can't yeah, just but be your like blood needs to be pure. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're if you have like super blood, you can. You know what's crazy? What? Uh. I think it was in Antarctica. There was like a uh, like a, a mission going on in Antarctica or something, like scientists or something like that. And it was in a period of the year because like you can you go there mm -hmm. and then like you have to stay the winter. Yeah. Because like there's no access, boats, planes, anything like that. Yeah. The doctor, his appendix I knew you were burst. <laughs> he had to operate it. on himself. <laughs> That's horrible. That is pretty cool. I don't. I That's don't know how you. Badass. I don't know how you wouldn't pass out from the pain of like cutting into yourself. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't know. That is gnarly. Yeah, because you can't like put yourself under because you, you got to <laughs> be awake and alert. It it's crazy, but it was I mean, successful. I, yeah, I guess it it's like you know that or die. Might as well try. That or die. Might as well try. That could be like a new saying for us. <laughs> uh, okay. Enough about the appendix or. We can circle back to it if we if we uh <laughs> if we feel things. necessary, and we will put these notes in the appendix of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, four hundred one k. Back to the boring stuff. Retirement. Uh, all right. So I just got this set up. We still haven't fully enacted it because everyone's got to like fill out some stuff on their preferences and their risk tolerance and yeah, what type of accounts they want it to be deposited into. But we have the system set up now, so that will be happening very shortly. And it started from my accountant, you know, uh, saying when it's time to do the taxes at the end of the year, do you have a 401k that's tax write off? You know, do you want to set one up? And this year finally got around to doing it. And it was something I wanted to offer everybody. And if you set it up as an employer, you have to be like equal opportunity. You have to give that option to everybody. And 
I believe it's mandatory that there has to be an employer match uh, side of it. So what we are doing is up to 3% of your salary is 100% matched by the employer, which is me. <laughs> and Thanks, Sean. Yeah, you got it. And then the next 2% is matched 50-50. So mm-hmm. if you... Just set aside 3% of each paycheck to go to your 401k. That gets matched 100%. And I also put in 3%. If you do 4%, then it goes up to 35 If you do 5 it goes up to 4%. So essentially, if you put aside 5% of your paycheck into uh, a 401k, we're going to match an additional 4%. So it's really yeah. 9% of your pay, um, which is, it adds up. It does. It does add up. And it's free money. So, I mean, well, free for me. <laughs> free for you. <laughs> free yeah. For you. <laughs> you guys are draining me dry here. Sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> but if your employer offers an employer match 401k, you should absolutely take it. You should. Because it is just money on top of your existing salary. And that's if you're not doing it, then you're leaving money on the table. And that's don't do true. That. Don't do that. Don't do it. Invest. Invest. And think of your future. Yeah, and it's it's so amazing the power of compounding interest. If you start young, yeah, or start whenever, start I think, whenever. I think a lot of people get with, trapped, and they're like, "Well, you know, I didn't start in my twenties, so what's the point of starting now in my forties? Yeah, no, well, because you. eventually you're gonna be in your eighties, and you're gonna be like, <laughs> "All right, well, now it's definitely too late. Yeah. <laughs> I have no money, and I haven't Still for a working. long time. <laughs> so yeah, it's and it's really." I think this is a lot easier to set up. I think health insurance is the more important thing to set up. I think that's the Mm -hmm. bigger incentive. But the 401k, it's easy to set up. It's something that as a business owner, you should have for yourself. And it's not a huge investment for for the employer to match. Yeah. Because, okay, say you have somebody just for simplicity's sake, they make $100,000 a year. They put a full 5% into a 401k. That means they're putting $5,000 into it. And as an employer, we would match 4%. So for one employee, it's $4,000 a year. You know, on, a, on a, a high level employee like that, like that's not a huge investment. And it's dispersed throughout the entire year. So it's something that once it's implemented, you don't really notice that much. It doesn't really hit your bottom line like that hard. And eventually, it's something that needs to be factored into your overall employee cost like that is a cost of having that employee yeah and it's something that you should offer so um you know when you look at it like that i think it's the 401k is the easier one to implement but it's not as big of a draw and i don't think it's as important as offering health insurance hmm what do you think yeah i guess so yeah actually yes i i agree with that because it's easier to get it's more economical to get on a group health insurance plan, but you can always, well, no, I mean, you get the employer match, so I'm not sure, but I guess, yeah, start with health insurance. Yeah. I think, I think for me, it just seems like that's more of a priority for, uh, potential employees. Yeah. I think that's more top of mind. It's, it's the 401k is like a nice added bonus. Like, yeah, you know, as soon as I asked you, you're like, yeah, definitely sign me up for it because it's free money. Not free money. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and Tom, who used to work at Lowe's, he had a 401k plan there. Mm-hmm. He was like, yeah, definitely sign me up for it. And, uh, you know, it's it's something that's easy to implement. Everyone's not going to want to do it. But if you offer it, you have to offer it to everybody. Yeah. And then once it's set up and it runs through your payroll, it just gets taken out incrementally. So the employee doesn't notice it that much like you know as an employee you just see like what is that final number that gets deposited into my account each week you know yeah if it's not there to begin with to be taken out you just you don't even notice it and it's just getting it's just adding up and it's getting compounded with interest and same thing with the employer it's getting taken out each pay period so it's just on autopilot it's it's getting done and you adjust and you charge a little bit more and everybody's happy. Everybody's, everybody's happy. happy, right? Everybody's happy. Is everybody Every- happy? <laughs> Come on. Like, why can't everyone just be happy <laughs> to have a job in this great country, the United States of America? <laughs> 
All right, Sean. Well, yeah, I can't afford it. You can't afford I it. I can't afford it. You, your little business, my can't business afford it. is growing, but I can't afford it just yet. Yeah. What do I do? Help me. No, it is. A, that is a valid. It's a valid concern, and it's a. It can seem like an insurmountable thing to overcome, and especially when you're in that stage of your business where you don't have these things in place yet. There's also so many other things that like need your attention and need your investment. But I think at the end of the day, especially in the trades, you need to look at your employees as one of your most valuable assets. So you need to make that a priority and you need to just charge more money. Yeah. Like when you go to the client, you say, uh, more monies, please. <laughs> need it for me and my employees. No, so money, please. let's talk about a couple ways that you can charge a little bit more and not really affect your business that much because I think people get trapped into this is what I've always charged. You know, there's always some pushback on price and that is the reason why I can't raise them because I'm at this price now and I still get pushback. Yeah. There's going to be a percentage of pushback no matter what you charge. Uh, we could charge $100,000 for something Another company could offer the same thing for $10. And I bet you'd still get the same percentage of people that are like, oh, that's that's too expensive. Yeah. Like that's the, uh, Can you do it for like, eight yeah. bucks? Where can you cut me a break? Yeah. So like, I mean, that's obviously a bit, a bit of an exaggeration, but no matter what price point you're at, there's going to be a percentage of people that feel like they have the right to negotiate. And right. no matter what number you say, it's going to be too high. So I think you need to understand that as just a basic concept like no matter what price point you're at certain people are going to say it's too expensive yeah but don't let that say okay well a couple of people said i was too expensive so i definitely can't be raise my prices yeah but if you think about it like all the people that said yes at your price that you said they probably would have paid an extra 10 percent. you know yeah so you need to work backwards. You need to figure out what your price is. You need to figure out what your worth is. This exactly. is this is what I need to cover my bills, my insurances, my 401ks, my all the other insurances, my workers comp. I need to figure out what I need to charge in order to cover all of those things first. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you work backwards from there and you and you basically break it down so that you are recouping that overhead plus profit with each day of work. And you need to look at it like as a whole thing. I think so many people get caught into a trap of this is the going rate for X service in my area. Yep. And when it comes down to it, like most of the time that I hear that, it's like completely just like made up. Like anyone that I actually talk to doesn't price anything out like that. That's not the the going rate. It's just like a... I don't know. It's it's online or something. It's on a guide of this is the yeah. average price you'll pay for a deck. Well, a deck could could be ten thousand dollars or it could be a hundred thousand dollars at the same same size, depending on materials, depending on yep. features, depending on all these things. So you can't get into that trap. You need to figure out what are your costs and then work backwards and figure out what you need to charge. Yep. Because if you don't do that, you're not gonna do do anybody any good because you're gonna be out of business. Exactly. You might, it might take a while for you to figure out that you aren't making any money. A lot of people like get into that cycle of, oh, I have this much in my bank account. I'm doing good. I can buy a new truck. Then it comes tax time. They're like, oh, I didn't put aside anything for taxes. Tax man come knocking. <laughs> he going to take your truck and your house. Yeah. And you brought up a good point earlier when you said. Um, I did? Yeah. Oh, like if you don't offer these benefits and you don't take care of your employees, um, you're just going to have this like open door of random employees that don't stay yeah. around. And it takes so much money and time and effort to hire or to like train a new employee. And I think that that often goes just like people Completely, don't think of, yeah. people don't think about that. They're not like, like, okay, well I hired this guy. He says he has experience day one. He's making me money. Like that is not the case. Yeah. Pretty much any employee is going to cost you money at first. So if you're just constantly training employees, then that's how you're wasting money. That's true. Yeah. Give them benefits. They'll stay. They're trained. They can train the next guy. It might end up being cheaper. Probably cheaper. That yeah. is, that's something that uh, Zach Detmore brought up on the podcast when we talked to him. Oh, yeah. How he really like 
super deep went into the breakdown of how long does it take to make an employee a profitable part of the business. And I think it's something that definitely gets overlooked because even people that are tracking things really closely in their business, it's it might be on an entire job basis. It might be on a per project basis or a per quarter. But to really break it down like per employee, it's a difficult thing to do. So a lot of people don't do it or mm. can't figure out a good system to track that. And then it it, it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle that you don't even realize it's taking a long time for this person to get caught up to speed. Even if they're mm-hmm. really experienced, they don't know your processes. They right. don't know how the job flow goes on your job site. So right. no matter what, it can be a huge learning curve to get somebody integrated into your business. And uh, yeah, so it might it might end up being cheaper if you can offer these things to keep people around. Yeah. Didn't even think of that. 100%. Good point. Yeah. That was a good point. Thank you. Catherine, great point. Sean, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> can you uh, use your pliers or whatever and rip open this beer for me? Yes, I can. We need to get a bottle opener in our podcast kit. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, all right. I think I think there's a couple other ways that we can talk about raising your prices. And well, you know what I want to get into? I want to get into an easy way to figure out all of these costs and break it down to figure out how you should be pricing stuff. What do you think? Think that would be helpful? I think so, yeah. And even if you already have a really good system for this, I think it's always good to just hear other people's uh, thinking behind it. So even if you have a great system, maybe you pick up a little something. something. I don't know. So I think the difficult thing to do is it's easy enough to see where your current costs are, break those down, Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully you're tracking this stuff. Uh, If you're not tracking it in real time on something like QuickBooks or any type of job tracking software, you're at least tracking it at the end of the year when you do your taxes. So you can look at at that at the very least and see where your expenses are coming from. Mm -hmm. And your biggest expense is probably going to be your employees, depending on how many you have. So you need to get that entire number. A lot of people get too complicated with it and they try to break it down like per hour or per whatever. I like to look at it as this is a yearly cost for me because people are going to be more productive one day than they are a different day. So if you get into that little nitty gritty time segments, it can be really difficult to to like monitor the productivity and the profitability of an employee. So I like to add up all of my employee costs. That's taxes, it's workman's comp insurance, it's health insurance, it's 401k, it's all of these things. Add that all up for the entire year and do the same thing with your other job costs. So things like your car insurance, your liability insurance, all of those like fixed overhead things, figure all of that out and then divide by how many workable days there are in the year. And that's something that you really need to think about because depending on where you live, you know, you're going to be more productive in the summer than you are in the winter. Like mm, we're trying to work mm-hmm. outside and we, we do work all year round, but the jobs go a little bit slower. Yeah. It rains a lot. It rained two days this week. Right. Those things need to be factored in. Then you can divide that and figure out, okay, each week, this is how much my business costs just to exist. And then depending on the structure of your business, you can do it by week. I like to do it by week because that's kind of how I look at projects. When I price them out, it's like this is a four-week project or this is a six-week project. I can add in all of those fixed overhead items and know that while we're on this job, the business is going to cost me this much just simply to exist. Then I can add on my material costs and I can figure out what does this job actually cost me and then you can add your profit on top of that. But if you don't have those numbers figured out, you're going to be way behind the eight ball And a good exercise to do is to figure out all those things that you want to be able to offer. So right now, if you're not, uh, if you're not offering health insurance or not offering that 401k match, add it into your overhead. Like you already are, then do that same process, work backwards. You can figure out how much more per week, per day, per month, whatever, are you going to have to charge your clients to recoup this maybe plus some. Yeah. And when you break it down like that, you'll see the end client 
doesn't necessarily have to get charged that much more for me to offer these things. Yeah. I think if somebody does that exercise who isn't offering this stuff, they'd be surprised that they probably can work this into. Yeah. And most people just aren't charging enough to begin with. So like you should be charging more anyway. You might not be making enough yourself. So it's a good exercise to see, okay, I can charge a little bit more. People are still saying yes. The same percentage of people are still saying I'm too expensive. And like I said, they're going to say that no matter what. Yeah. People are going to say it no matter what. I think that you should always have a healthy balance of like some people saying yes and some people saying you're too expensive. You don't want to be the cheapest guy. So yeah, you should be hearing that you're too expensive sometimes. Absolutely. A lot of people say you should only sell 10% of your jobs. If you're selling more than 10% of your jobs, you're too cheap. Mm. I don't know what the exact figure is, but maybe 30% or something. (laughs) 10% seems like, yeah, that's pretty... But, but yeah, think I, about I, it. I, I mean, it. you know, we're going, think of all the people that we siphon out, not personally, but through our process, like the amount of people that see our stuff and say, oh, that's awesome. They go to our website. They see a rough idea of how much it costs. They don't even bother, bother to follow up. Yeah. Some people make it past that. They fill out the form. They see we have a wait list. They say, okay, I don't want to wait. Some people follow up. They say, get me on the wait list. They wait seven months and they say, okay, yeah, I'm still interested. And then I talk to them and then they're like, oh, yeah, it's too expensive. <laughs> There's always going to be that contingent of people yeah. that say you're too expensive, that don't have a realistic frame of mind, but don't base your business on what they think is reasonable. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter. You got to run your business. You can't be yeah. just charging whatever LA prices. This isn't a charity. <laughs> this is a business. Exactly. This is a business and you're not going to do anybody any good if you're undercharging because you're not going to be able to support yourself or your family or your employees or their families. Yeah. You have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders as a business owner. And it's your God given responsibility <laughs> to charge enough. Yeah. What do you think of that? Is that I, too dramatic? That was a little dramatic, but I like it. <laughs> okay, cool. Sometimes you got to uh, throw a little bit of drama in there to get your point across, <laughs> but I think it's important. So many people are just shortchanging themselves because of that expectation that some people are going to think it's too expensive and they're not willing to have that difficult conversation with somebody. Yeah. You got to just get over it. It is what it is. Yeah. And also, I think it's just good for like the competitive nature of businesses in an area because if like company A isn't charging enough and then company B goes to go do an estimate and they're like, oh, well, company A is doing it for way less than what you're doing it. Company B is like, okay, well, I'll lower my price. You're just lowering the prices in your area. Like you should, yeah. everyone should charge what they're worth and charge, get the money that they deserve. Yeah. And it kind of boosts the economy in the area. I agree. Then everybody has a little bit more money to go to the local ice cream parlor and get, <laughs> get a nice waffle cone. Yeah. You know, it boosts everybody up. It boosts everybody up. It boosts the boosts property value up. It boosts everything. God, these are such great points you're making, Catherine. <laughs> very, very astute points that you are pointing out. Love it. Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. All right. Do you uh, have anything else you want to say? I do. Okay. I, okay. Catherine, I am just getting started. We're not running up against the time, are we? We are a little bit. We yeah, are? It well, is. I have hours more to just <laughs> throw at people here. One okay. more thing that came to mind okay. was... Don't base your prices on what you think that you could afford. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I used to get in that trap, especially when I first started. I was like $30,000 for a deck. That's insane. That is absolutely (laughs) insane. And for me at that time, I was, I was bootstrapping my business. I was trying to buy a truck. I was trying to buy equipment. Like I couldn't afford a $30,000 deck at that point, but that doesn't mean that another person (laughs) isn't in a, vastly better (laughs) financial situation than you are yeah and they can afford it and it's what it should cost and it's what you need to actually build your business have some money for yourself and have a cushion there that you can use to grow and reinvest in your business that's what i'm talking about (laughs) no i'm not i'm still here yeah what do you think i like that you should always price yourself out of business because price yourself out of business Price yourself out of doing your own business. I don't know how to word that price properly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Your prices should be higher you. than what you can afford, so then you're always growing your yeah. personal self. Yeah, that's what I meant by that. Don't price yourself out of business. That didn't. That's not how. Price yourself out of some business, though. Make some. sure a healthy people, a healthy amount of people, are saying you're too expensive. <laughs> yeah. 
But if you are one of the more expensive people, make sure that you have the skills to back it up at least. Don't be a hack and be very expensive. That's the worst. That's the, that's where you don't want to be. That's, that's exactly worst. where you don't want to be. If you're happy being a hack, that's fine. <laughs> but make sure that people are really getting a good deal on it. Yeah. Because yeah, some people are that, happy hiring that. hacks too. They're like, but yeah. it was only 500 bucks. <laughs> and it, it's yes, done now. So why do I care? Yeah. Who cares? Some people, there's, there's a market that, for that. There's that three, three rule thing. I can be fast. No. I can oh, be cheap. Yeah. I can be good. Cheap, fast, I can and good. O- I can only be two of those things. You, you get, get to pick. pick. Two. <laughs> yep. My dad, that's one of the things my dad said all the time. Yeah. He, that's, that's dad advice. Oh for my sure. God. And you know what's, <laughs> you know, what's absolutely crazy. Um, he had all these things that like, I'm kind of talking about him like he's dead. He's, he's still, <laughs> he's still with us. Um, there just like so many things from my childhood. I remember like him having these things that he would say and, like also things that he would say, he would say like on estimates to people, like these lines that he had, like he'd be like, does this sound familiar? Well, I'm getting into <laughs> okay, it. Sorry, guys. He was like, okay, this is, this is one of my lines. People love don't spend more than you can afford. Or no, he says there's two rules. <laughs> don't spend more than you can afford. You got that? You got that? Okay. Number two, more important than number one. Don't spend less than you can afford. And he thought that that was like the greatest line ever. And I was always like, that seems kind of tacky. I don't know. But now that I was just on design week all week, I found myself saying the same thing to so many different people. And it, some of these jokes, they hit. They hit every time. And, you know, I'm a numbers guy. I'm going to say the joke that hits the most amount of times. And for me, it's, hey, if I, if I could just find those those customers that didn't have a budget, I'd be set. But uh, I haven't found them yet there, Mr. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Everybody laughs. Everybody has a good time. Uh, that's and a good we all line. go home line. happy. Yeah, that's a good line. <laughs> I'm pretty jacked up today. I don't know why. I but. don't know either. All right. Well. I think that sums up everything. I thought that this was going to be a boring episode. I did too. I had a good time. I had a good time as well. So like we had some good. We had some, some good, good lines for everybody. In there. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's complete gibberish, and we are just under some sort of. <laughs> if anybody of has made it this far, please let us know. <laughs> please let us know, and please once again, two things: leave us a five star <laughs> review, please, on your podcast platform of choice, but also reach out to us more. We had a couple yeah. people reach out to us this past week. And uh, it was just really cool. Like, It is so nice. We see the numbers of how many people are listening, but we don't get a lot of like direct content through Instagram or mm-hmm. Facebook or anything like that. And it's cool to have people give us some input on what you want to hear about. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's cool to hear because should I mention again that we're, we don't make any money on this? <laughs> Zero. Zero. It costs us lots of money. This is what you would call a passion project. <laughs> some people would. <laughs> some people would. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for this episode. And are we totally done? Are we totally done? Is the episode over? Is the there anything else? Is that not over. There's more. <laughs> There's more. Oh God! What is it? How dare you forget? What is it? A secret question time. <gasps> secret question time. Dun, 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 dun. We do need to make a, a jingle for that. I think so. Uh, you're a singer, and I am a. Uh, I feel like I'm a really good producer. Okay. I make up songs all the Don't time. You play. Uh, the guitar I play, and the drums. I play everything. Ugh. I play everything. All right. Start a band. Okay. A jingle band? A jingle band. A jingle band. I think that's where the money is anyway, so. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, All right. Secret question time. Okay. Well, since I went first last week, it is your turn. Oh, no. Okay. So. You got a question? My question. Okay. I hope you picked a serious one because I got a silly one. I did pick it. It's so serious. Okay, it's like the most serious question <laughs> ever. Okay. Okay. Um. What celebrity do you think you look most like? Or what celebrity do you most hear that you look like? The one that I hear the most is yeah. probably Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> now, uh, I think the only one I've really ever gotten is Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls? Yeah. Interesting. And if you do a side-by-side, like, you, it's not like... It's not crazy, but yeah, you know, you could see it. Okay, okay. I think it's more in our in our natural tenacity for life. Mm, we just okay. really grab life by the horns. Yeah, him yeah. in like a outdoor wilderness way, and me in like a deck and patio kind of way, <laughs> but still similar nonetheless. Sim- definitely similar. Definitely, definitely very similar. Definitely similar. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
And what's I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? You can you think of anybody? I think that you look like my brother in law. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's not a celebrity. He's not a celebrity, but he's the only person that I think you have a resemblance. Hopefully, to. You one have a very day, unique, unique. Hopefully, look. one day he'll be able to say that I am the celebrity that he looks like. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Mike, but I think I have I have a better chance at becoming a celebrity. I'd say so. Yeah. Because he's not really working on it. He's not. No. He's not really doing he's anything a, forward facing. He's a. Yeah. He's more of a behind the scenes guy. He's a behind the scenes guy. Yeah, we need those sure. people too. For sure. All right. Well, something to think about. Something to think about. Uh, it is kind of funny how we do look alike, especially like a couple years ago when he first started coming around. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was his first time I met him. <laughs> I don't know how long <laughs> they've been together, but uh, I was like, whoa, this is kind of freaking me out. Yeah. Uh, I'd be like scrolling through like social media and I'd be like, oh, look, there's a picture of Sean. And then I'd be like, nope, that's my brother-in-law. It was yep. And you'd be like, when did Mike start building decks and patios? <laughs> oh, wait, that's wrong. Okay. All right. So uh, who have you gotten? Um, I am a blonde haired woman with blue eyes. So I have heard every blonde haired woman with blue eyes. I don't know if I can think of any blonde haired women with blue <laughs> eyes. I know it's, it's such a niche, niche uh, group of people. I can't like specifically think of it. I don't, I don't, I don't look at eye color like whatsoever. Like I don't yeah. know what color eyes my parents have. You don't know what color. Um, like, I'm ninety percent sure that my dad has brown eyes, but I don't know about my mom. I feel like How one. Do you I have. Know? I don't know. I have blue eyes, so I feel like one of them probably <laughs> does. Right? Yeah. Do they have to though? Because I don't know if she has blue eyes. I think it would be incredibly rare for you to have really a parent with with if both of your parents had brown eyes for you to have blue eyes. Huh. I, I would assume your mom has blue eyes. I'll so have to look into that. Yeah, I don't know. But that's weird. I never like really think about it. Um, okay, so give hmm. me an example. Who have you been okay. compared to? Um, I would most of the time I would say it's Reese Witherspoon is what I get. Really? Because I would have guessed it was Reese without her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one time when I was in college, um, my roommate played college lacrosse, and she was playing the Japanese national team or whatever. So they had a team of Japanese people, women that they were playing against. And I walked into, they had like a, a mixer situation, like a party. Okay. They didn't speak English. <laughs> okay. I'm having a hard time following this story, but go ahead. Japanese lacrosse team playing yes. United States lacrosse team. They were having a mixer to like for funsies. Cause they were like hosting this Japanese oh, okay. team. And my roommate invited me and I walked into the room and they legitimately thought that I was Cameron Diaz, but they didn't know like American culture. So like they just saw me and they were like, but they like, they actually thought I was Cameron Diaz. And I was like, this is the best day of my life. I could see Cameron Diaz more than Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. Like a little bit. Yeah. But Cameron Diaz has that like big, she has like a big mouth or something. I don't know. She, she does has like a, a mouth, very big, a big like smile. something. I don't yeah. know. Uh, that's very interesting. But yeah, I think that's very common because when Sarah went to China for like a semester or something, some sort of school trip, like everybody thought that she was either Jennifer Aniston or Paris Hilton who Whoa. don't look alike <laughs> at all. No. Like they just think any American girl with blonde hair is a celebrity. Yeah. So I don't know. Something to think about. Something to think about. Did you get any other ones besides that? Um, I mean, I've gotten them. Like, I feel like I've gotten them all. Everyone. Like, yeah. You definitely kind of look like the woman that is on instant dream makeover or whatever on Netflix where they remodel a house in 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Thanks. So check it out. You've said that. Yep. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, okay. glad that we now know that about each other. Uh, all right. You ready for my question? Yes. Do you have anything else to say about who you look like? No. Okay. Uh, oh, man. I kind of forget what I was going to say. Let me remember. Okay. Yeah, I remember. All right. Imagine you're having a really bad day. Okay. Bad day. Bad day. Yeah. Would you rather be left alone or have somebody like incessantly trying to cheer you up? Hmm. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, I guess it would depend on what the cause of my bad day is. Okay. Yeah. But like probably, everyone else in the world has died. That would probably well, then like, I'm then I'm only going to be left alone. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I would say probably left alone. Yeah. Hmm. I don't that's like true. it when people are like 
When you're like already like in a little bit of a mood and people are like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Really? I don't like that. You don't like that? <laughs> you're saying that because I do that all the time? Yep, 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 yep. But uh, In the van. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But uh, well, yeah, I would say mostly left alone. Yep. Unless it's something that's like fixable, in which case then I would like to be around people. Okay. All right, about, well, what about you? Give me like a, a most of the... the more than 50%. Is you this like pick an, is this like the, an HR the situation? Where you're like, yeah. There's been some complaints <laughs> about you. Yeah. I mean, a people little don't bit know of a bitch. To, people don't know how to handle you. All right. What would you say more? Left alone or you can only pick one. <laughs> okay. Don't say, oh, sometimes. Okay. Uh, no, I guess people then. I'd rather be around people. Okay. <clears throat> you were really lean and left, leave alone. And now you're saying around people. Well, I feel like it's it, like at work. Like I, it's different than like if it's like my husband like being like what's wrong what's wrong but like at work I would want to be around people and that then doesn't work be distracted that always works with Sarah whenever Does I say it? that yeah like, what's wrong come she, on she Someone loves that <laughs> loves it and it really gets to the root of the problem it's it's always a really effective technique <laughs> um, yeah uh, all right well what about you uh so you know how I said you got to pick one one or yeah. the other well you I kind of feel like <laughs> yeah I feel like my inclination is I want to be alone. Yeah. But that doesn't help me break out of the funk. Right. Like people incessantly just staying around me and being like... Asking what your vibe is. Yeah, what's wrong? Oh, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I that don't helps say me that. Break out I say, if you're in a bad mood, I say, first things first, personal and professional. Yep. And then I say, what's the vibe? If Vibes are always high. Yeah. I can't help personal, but if it's professional, I can help. So I say, personal and professional. Yep. Then I ask for the vibe. Okay. I yeah. feel like it's helpful. Maybe I think, I'm annoying, yeah, I think but it, I feel I think like it's, it's helpful. Yeah, I think I think it is annoying. Yeah, for sure. No, <laughs> it is helpful if because uh, a lot of the times, actually, my funks at work are due to me just kind of being like, like vaguely overwhelmed with the amount of like to do stuff. Yeah. I have like I just have a lot of things going on in my brain. Yeah, like I at think the end of every job, you get that. yeah, I you do. get into some Ugh. sort of mood. Or today you forgot the cameras, so that put you in a oh, mood. I was so mad at myself. I was so mad at myself. Yeah, uh, but anyway, I got over it. Yeah, here we are. We made it. We made it, and uh, we will make it another day. <laughs> Hopefully, God willing. <laughs> if the Lord see fit, I don't know. I'm just out here trying to bide my time till the good Lord take me away. <laughs> Okay. We All right, gone it's time off to the end rails. this episode because we are losing our minds. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. I definitely don't. So until next time, <laughs> this has been the Hardworking Happy Hour. See you next week.